أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this session we are going to look into how to do simple random sampling, stratified random sampling and systematic sampling. We are going to practically understand how to perform each of the sampling techniques. In simple random sampling we have equal and known chance for each element to be selected as subject in the sample. Now how do we do simple random sampling? Now before doing simple random sampling there are few conditions that one should understand. Condition number one is that you have to define your target population. And by definition here we mean that you should have a complete population frame of your population. Each and every single element should be listed. So if you do not have a proper population frame or the listing of all the elements in the population, you cannot do simple random sampling. How can you assign a chance or equal a known chance to a particular element when you do not have the details of that particular element? So first thing that you need a complete list of all the elements in the population that you want to select or one of those elements or few of those elements to be selected as subjects in your sample. You need a complete list. Now for example, let's say we want to conduct a study and I've got 20 students. Now out of those 20 students, I want to select only 5. Now how would I select 5 students randomly if I haven't got the details of all the 20 students. So the first thing is I need a list of students. Let's say this is my list. So this is the list of students. And let's say I've got their numbers, mobile numbers and email addresses here as well so that I can access them. So who, whosoever is selected, I can then access them, maybe call them, send them an email and intimate them that they have been selected for a particular uh, survey, maybe for a particular study, for a particular scholarship, for, for a particular trip, whatsoever. So this is the first step that one needs to do. You should have the population frame. Now I want to select five students out of this and they should be randomly selected. For this what one can do is generate random numbers. Now how do you generate random numbers? You've got this website random.org. Here it is. I'll share the link as well. Now, how many random numbers do I need? I need five random numbers because I want to select five students. And like what's the range from where the random numbers should be generated? Because I've got in total 20 students. So the range is 1 to 20. I can format it, it in different columns but for now it's fine and here I get the numbers. So here is those five students that should be selected. These, rend these numbers are randomly generated. I didn't generate the numbers or I didn't think of the numbers. I used a random number generator. So 19, 3, 11, 4, 17. 19, this one here should be part of your study, this one here should be part of your study, 11, 4, 17, 11, 4 and 17. So out of these 20 students, these should be part of your study. This is how you do simple random sampling. Now the condition is that you should know your population frame. You have complete listing of the population. 
a big misconception that I have witnessed over the years is that when somebody is doing research and we ask them, okay, how did you select your sample? How did you collect the data? And they say that we just walked into an office and randomly gave the questionnaire. Well, this is wrong. You might not have given a questionnaire to someone who might be sounding very serious or looking very serious or looking very disturbed maybe. You might have given a questionnaire to someone who might have uh, approached you when you were walking into the office or somebody who might have uh, appeared more friendly. So this is, there is a certain amount of bias. There is no equal and known chance here. So in order for random sampling, you need complete population frame and then you need your sample size required and then you generate random numbers and then you select your sample and access these people. Now you might ask a question, what if, because we need five students, what if two of them are not available? What if two of them are not available? So you can do obviously do random sampling again from the rest of the people. So rest of the 15 um, participants or elements or rest of the 15 students may again be subjected to simple random sampling. And then you might select two people from that list. So this is how you do simple random sampling. So next is stratified sampling. Now the problem with simple random sampling is that it does not account for grouping in the population. And the groups may be underrepresented when you are doing simple random sampling. How? For example, let's, let's assume we have a sample or we have a population of 1000 students. And we draw, let's say, the population is 1000 students and we need a sample of 100 students. Now if we do simple random sampling, a few of the students or groups may be underrepresented. How? Let's say out of these, these this population of 1000 people, there are 500 bachelor level students. There are 300 master level students. There are 150 who are doing MS or MPhil. And there are only 50 do, who are doing PhD. So when you are generating your random numbers, what do you think most of your sample will come from? It will come from these two categories or these two groups this particular group will definitely be underrepresented. Maybe you have one or two people coming out of this group, but majority of the representation will be from this group because these particular groups have got much more or many more elements. So this group may be underrepresented. This group may be underrepresented. So now you want to represent each group equally. Now, in order to give equal representation to each of the groups, what you need to do is, you need to do simple random sampling from each of the groups. Now, how do you do simple random sampling from each of the group? The, thing, the next step is, you calculate the percentage. How do you calculate the percentage? So, you require a sample size of 100. Your total population is 1000. You multiply it by 100 and what you get is 10%. What you get is 10%. So 100 is 10% of 1000. So you take 10% from this particular group, 10% from each group. So each group is equally represented. So you select 50 from this group. 30 from this group, 15 from this group and 5 from this group. This is called proportionate stratified 
random sampling. So you draw proportions, equal proportions from every single group. This group is called stratum. It's called stratum. Where these are your strata. So stratum is singular and strata is plural. Let's say if we wanted, let's change the formula a bit to make it divided by total population, multiply by 100. So what if I've got a population of, let's say, 3000 people and I needed a sample of, let's say, 600. So now from each group, I'll draw 20%. From each group, I'll be drawing 20%. Obviously, the population numbers will change now. So, how do I draw 50 from this group, 50 from this group, 15 from this group, 5 from this group? You just have to do simple random sampling in each of the group. You will have a list of bachelor level students and from that bachelor level students, you will select 50 students. You will have a list of master level students and you will do simple random sampling and select 30 students. You will have a list of MS MPhil level students and you will select 15 students and similarly for PhD. Now each group will become a separate population and then you will draw subjects from that particular group. What if now still let's say let's say I'm conducting my study and I've done proportionate stratified random sampling equal representation for each group. But what I think is that this group is overrepresented. Bachelors is overrepresented because they had higher number of students. Although I have done proportionate stratified random sampling, so I can change the proportions. How do I change the proportions? Let's say I change it to 40. I change it to, let's say I will keep it to 30. Let's say I change it to 20. And let's say I change it to 10. Still, I've got 100 just as I had 100 here. Now, there is a very important question that must be answered here as well. If you are drawing the required, the minimum required number of sample or subjects from your elements or the population, if I send my questionnaire to these 50 people, Obviously, not all of them will answer. So, instead of drawing 10%, I increase my sample size. So, you do not fix your sample size to 50 because your response rate will always be low. So, in order to counter for that, you need a higher sample size. So, instead of drawing 10%, I'll draw 20%. So instead of drawing 50, I'll draw 100 random numbers and send my questionnaire to 100 people. So instead of drawing 30, I'll draw 60 and send my questionnaire to 60 people. And similarly for the rest of them. So if I'm sending my questionnaire to 100 people, at least 50 will respond. So I'll have my minimum sample size requirement met. So this is how you do stratified random sampling and you do it when you've got groups in your population that you want to be represented in your sample. Now next is systematic sampling. The systematic sampling design involves drawing every nth element in the population starting with a randomly chosen element between 1 and n. Now what if you do not have a complete list of people or you do not have your population frame but you still want a certain amount of chance to be associated with each element in the population to be selected as subject in the sample but you do not have the complete population frame you do not have a complete list of people for example you are interested in studying customers that are visiting a bank now obviously the bank will not share the information of its customers with you. So you do not have a complete population frame. But 
let's say the bank allows you to stand outside and maybe ask the, the customers coming into the bank your questions. So in that case, you need two things. You need, and here is the formula, you need your complete population size. You need your complete population size denoted by capital N. And then you need your required sample. For example, let's say we, we, we visit a bank and the bank manager tells us that there are, for example, 300 customers coming in every day. And let's assume we need a sample size of 50 people. So 300 is your total population and you need a sample size of 50. So 300 divided by 50 is 6. So you sample every sixth person walking into the bank or out of the bank. So in this case, you do not need the population frame. Rather, what you need is your total population and the sample size. So you divide your total population by the sample size and you get the element that you should approach. In this case, we are going to approach the sixth customer that maybe walks out or walks into the bank. And you continue on sampling till you get your 300th or sorry 50th customer because your sample size required is 50. So this is how you do systematic sampling when you do not have the complete population frame rather you have got some detail of the total population size. So this is how you approach the customers till you get your sample size of 50. So this is how systematic sampling which is a type of probability sampling works. The same example can be used for example you are in a mall and you want to study customers or you are in a university and you want to study the, uh, the, the, the perception of the students towards online learning or maybe towards the university. So the university will not share the details of its students with you. But you get an approval to ask questions. So you stand at the gate and ask people questions. So let's say your sample size required is 400. And the university tells you that the university has around 4000 students. So you will get in contact with every 10th student who walks into the university. So the 10th the student will be selected, then the 20th, then the 30th, then the 40th, then the 50th, till you get your sample size of 400. So this is how you do systematic sampling when you do not have the complete population frame.